probably the biggest uh, misconception people have about mentoring is they assume you have to be white hair like mine and 83 years old uh, to be a mentor. Uh, they, they picture mentoring as this 83-year-old pianist teaching a 16-year-old how to play the piano, which could be true, could be the mentoring relationship. But basically, there are no age restrictions on mentoring. Uh, a 16-year-old could actually mentor a 25-year-old in the area of skateboarding, for example. The 16-year-old may be a world-class skateboarder. The 25-year-old is not. The 16-year-old the could actually mentor the 25-year-old in how to do it and could stay friends for a lifetime developing a progressive skill in skateboarding and go to conferences, uh, events, etc. But another misconception is that it, it has to be uh, done on a regular basis. In other words, it has to be every week. That's two misconceptions. One is that it takes too much time. And number two, it has to be on a regular basis. A lot of my mentoring relationships are sort of intense initially, but as needed eventually. That's very different than a lot of people assume it is. The other thing is, the misconception is, another misconception is that uh, it has to be done personally. I say, well, initially it has to be done personally. But let's say, for example, we live 2,000 miles apart, but we have the telephone, we have Skype, we have uh, just a wide variety of, of uh, tools to help keep, keep the communication alive. And then occasionally, let's say once a year, every two or three years, we get together personally. I say there's nothing wrong with setting up the relationship on a one-to-one -one basis. When the person moves to Alaska, you can still stay in, stay in touch, no problem. So those are some of the miscommunications that are the most frequent ones I've discovered and uncovered since about 1990.